What would you say was the best collaboration of all time? Queen and Bowie, Daenerys and Jon Snow maybe, or perhaps even Collins Key and Wenji? Well, think again, because Microsoft are apparently now working with Sony. Microsoft made a surprising announcement yesterday, revealing how it will be working with Sony to explore a strategic partnership. Now, before anyone gets too excited, it's important to note that you're not likely to see Halo's Master Chief showing up in The Last of Us Part 2 anytime soon, as this partnership will not cover games, as the two companies are only collaborating on cloud services and AI technology. Yeah, so basically all the stuff that gamers don't really care about. Well, not exactly. For example, this could be good news for PS Now subscribers, as it's likely that Sony will look to harness Microsoft Azure technology for the service. Service. Microsoft Azure is the cloud technology which Microsoft have been developing for over 10 years and are still investing staggering amounts of cash into. With Google's hugely ambitious cloud streaming service Stadia being announced back in March and all the talk in the industry that the future is in the clouds, it likely brought home to Sony how close they are to being left behind. Sony CEO Kenichiro Yoshida said, I believe that our joint development of future cloud solutions will contribute greatly to the advancement of interactive content. Natia Nadella, Microsoft CEO, said, Our partnership brings the power of Azure and Azure AI to Sony to deliver new gaming and entertainment experiences for customers. This clearly seems like a good move for Sony. Being able to harness the Azure technology allows them to stay within touching distance of the competition. What Microsoft stands to gain from this arrangement, however, is still unclear. It does make one of their fiercest competitors somewhat reliant on their technology in future. Maybe that in itself gives them some advantages. Or maybe it's just a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend. With Google's explosive entry into the gaming sector imminent, maybe they're looking for allies going into the future, especially with Amazon now also working on their own cloud gaming service. After all, the console wars may be coming to an end, but the next war may well be fought in the clouds. Stadia is coming. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. And winter is coming. So this was Bit of a surprise, right? Microsoft and Sony working together? Like console wars are over. What what are the Sony fanboys and the like Sony ponies and the X what do they call them? X bones. X bones. What, what are they gonna say about it's like put your throw your arms down, guys? You're like there's no there's no more fighting. Like we're working to, we're gonna be making money together because yeah. lo and behold, there's a greater threat um, <laughs> coming from the north in the in in, in the case of like the Google Stadia's like yeah. it's it, when it was coming and all, you know what I mean? But then, if, if we use continuing the uh, Game of Thrones example, Cersei said she was going to help out uh, the northern people, like Jon and Daenerys and all that. Mm. But then she didn't. She didn't. So Spoiler alert. Who's, uh, well, last year's season? <laughs> Catch up. If, if you're not watching it by now, you're not going to. It's your own fault. Yeah, come on. <laughs> um, so, who's in, who's in charge here? Who do you reckon's really making the moves. I reckon it's probably Microsoft because we've seen what they've been trying to do with Nintendo recently because they're planning to put like Xbox Live elements onto yeah. the Switch and all that kind of stuff. And this is like the big heads of the corporations. This isn't this isn't the games sector specifically. This isn't, uh, what's his name from uh, Microsoft, Phil Spencer. It's not him. It's the it's the, like his boss who's dealing with with Sony here. So it's it's bigger than just games. It's the technology and it's the everything behind it. It's the future. It's the cloud. And this is the way Way that the industry seems to be going not just gaming but everything's going into the cloud in future so more it, places to leak your nudes from that's all i all i hear when i hear the cloud <laughs> that's all you're interested in i mean come on <laughs> good stuff out there i kind of fucking lost my tangent now i can think about <laughs> you looking at nudes on the clouds <laughs> <laughs> and next up is the Gaming News Nuggets, sponsored by GT Arcade. GT Arcade is one of the ultimate gaming platforms, now boasts over 1 billion registered players worldwide. With popular titles such as Legacy of Discord, the League of Angels series, and Rangers of Oblivion, GT Arcade continues to raise the standards of free-to-play games. It also now provides GT Arcade Desktop, a PC platform where players can play their favorite browser and mobile games with additional rewards and a smoother game play experience. So whether you're playing on mobile, passing the time on your daily commute, or playing in your browser at work whenever you get five minutes to yourself. And if you register for GT Arcade using the link in the top of our description, you'll get yourself a free $10 worth of gift pack. 
How's that for great value? You can also win $100 worth of gift card. All you have to do is go on Instagram or TikTok with your favorite character image and make a post using the hashtag GT Arcade and the best 10 posts with more than a thousand likes each win $100 Amazon gift cards. So check it out, link in the top of the description or the first comment, pinned comment on this video. On with the nuggets. It was previously announced that the Quantic Dreams titles Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls and Detroit Become Human were heading to PC via the Epic Games Store. Now we have release dates for each of them with Heavy Rain coming on June 24th, Beyond Two Souls on July 22nd and Detroit Become Human sometime in the autumn. All three games are also getting demos ahead of their official releases. 4A Games Metro Exodus is getting not one but two DLC expansions, the first of which drops this summer. The first one is called The Two Colonels and tells the story of Colonel Klebnikov beneath the city of Novosibirsk in what sounds like more traditional and claustrophobic Metro gameplay. The second one comes early next year and will deal with Sam, a character from the main story, and will introduce a new sandbox area to explore. As well as the game that was announced in Sony's State of Play, the Predator franchise is getting another game. The new game was spotted by the website Exophase, who had a trophy list for a game called Predator VR. Y yay? Yay? The trophy seems to suggest that there will be a full campaign, multiplayer and a horde mode, and as you'd expect, they all feature classic Predator references. From today until June the 13th, the Epic Game Store are running a massive store-wide sale, appropriately titled the Epic Mega Sale. You can snag a bargain for up to 70% off, and you can also get an additional $10 off every game which you purchase over $14.99, and also even applies to pre-orders. The current free game on the platform is Stories Untold, which is available from now until May the 30th, and Rhyme will also be available from May the 23rd. Talking of sales, the dates for the Steam Summer Sale have leaked again. Out of the blue, from nowhere, was that a total shock to anyone? One of the worst kept secrets in gaming kicks off on June the 25th and will run until July the 9th. So you might just want to hold off on buying that game you're eyeing up, just in case it drops in price in a few weeks time. The Final Fantasy VII Remake has had a bit of a story development process, but despite getting a new trailer during a recent Sony State of Play, don't expect the game to launch any time this year. According to Square Enix's financial report, they're not planning to release any blockbuster titles before the end of the fiscal year which ends March 2020. This also rules out the still unknown Avengers project that the company is meant to be working on, but keep your eyes peeled at E3 since Final Fantasy VII is confirmed to be at the show. The PlayStation YouTube channel has released a video all about Days Gone's music. Speaking with the game's composer, Nathan Whitehead, he speaks about how the music had to reflect the nature of the world, as well as the characters and story being more than just motorcycles. Interestingly, he explains how the core theme for the Freakers actually came from dragging a violin bow across a cymbal. One symbol recording felt really cool, it felt aggressive, it, it had a cool shape to it. Just in case a Plague Tale's grim setting hadn't depressed you enough, there is now a video of Sean Bean reading a poem. He reads the poem The Little Boy Lost by William Blake, which is very similar to what the character Hugo experiences in the game. Luckily for Sean though, he didn't die while he was reading the poem, so that's a win. The latest event to hit the Battle Royale juggernaut Fortnite is based all around John Wick, in promotion of John Wick Chapter 3 Parabellum. The event comes with a mode called Wick's Bounty, where players kill each other to earn coins, and the more you kill, the more valuable you become. A John Wick skin will be available for purchase, different to the previous Reaper skin, which was only in inspired by the character, as well as the simple sledgehammer item. And that concludes our gaming news nuggets for today. Links to everything we've just mentioned are down in the description of this video if you want to go and check them out. Let's move on now to joke of the day. Henry, here take, we go. Take it away. So this joke comes from our Discord channel, which you get access to if you're a patron. And if you want to do that, go to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. You'll get early access to the podcast and all the quality dad jokes. So, let's go. This comes in from Rich2112. Scientists have just grown human vocal cords in a lab. The results speak for themselves. Classic. Pun. Thanks, Rich. Love a good pun. Appreciate your service, sir. Creative Assembly's latest addition to the Total War franchise, Total War Three Kingdoms, is out on May 23rd and the reviews have already landed and they're looking pretty good. The game currently sits at 83 on Metacritic at the time of filming, aggregated from a total of 27 review scores. The game is widely praised for its blend of historical and fantasy gameplay, as well as its handling of the story and character-based progression. The best review by far comes in from WCCF Tech, allocating it a perfect 10 score. Reviewer Chris Ray says, Total War Three Kingdoms is as close to flawless as you'll find 
combined with a fantastic balance of 4x strategy and character focused development and emergent storytelling. The battles are frantic with increased tactical opportunities through dueling. City development is more intuitive and less restrictive, though still requires thought, and all of this takes place on a China that looks downright fantastic, where even the UI and menus look great. This is the Total War experience and a new high for the series. The main criticisms of the game seem to be that it isn't particularly welcome to franchise newcomers and that when compared to the more arcadey Total War Warhammer series, this one seems flat. Among the lowest reviews so far is the 3.5 out of 5 star review from Trusted Reviews. Reviewer Jake Tucker notes, For Total War fans, there's lots here to enjoy. It's the best historical Total War game since Shogun 2 and one of the finest the series has seen thus far. However, those drawn in by the bombast and spectacle of Total War Warhammer, this game can feel flat by comparison. Beautifully presented, this is a treat for history fans, but it might leave other players slightly cold. A step back for a franchise that fell on the edge of mainstream success, but series veterans will feel right at home. So, 83 is not a bad score for the latest century in the Total War franchise. It's up on last year's Thrones of Britannia, which only managed a 75 on Metacritic, although it misses the mark of recent franchise entry Warhammer 2, which managed an 87 the year before. The game releases next week on PC and is priced at £44.99 or $60 if you're on that side of the pond. So, 83 is pretty good. It's better than some other AAA games, and I think strategy games are in that weird place where they're not mainstream success, but they have loads of budget behind them, and loads of tech going on in mm. there. So I think they're they're an interesting one. Yeah, and uh, the Total War series is a staple for all strategy fans. Mm. If you're a strategy PC gamer and you've not played a Total War game, then you're not really a strategy. Who PC even are game. you? Yeah, who are you? Do you <laughs> even exist? You, you, you're not real, are you? Do you even Total War? <laughs> I has to be said that I miss the old days where things were simple, like Rome Total War. Rome was my favourite. Not not the recent Rome 2, not that one. Like the old Rome, that was like, it got like 97 on Metacritic or something stupid like that. It was so out of 93, probably 93. I'm probably exaggerating a bit, but that, that was the best. That was one of the best ever. But now, like, going into... This is kind of the first time it's kind of historical and a little bit fantasy at the same time. you still got your power, a few powers, and it's, like, character-based like it was in Warhammer, but it's supposed to be true to history at the same time. Um, how that plays out will be interesting. I'm definitely going to check out some of the reviews and see if it's worth picking up. I played Britannia, Thrones of Britannia last year, and it was all right for a while, but then the cracks started showing and you, and you could, the, the engine that they used in that game was the older, older one and it, it started showing its age quite quickly. It wasn't perfect, it was a good game, it's a solid game, you got to play as Wales, you can conquer the English, which is always a plus in my book. It was uh, dastardly I mean, English. Uh, was it revisionist history, you being on the, on the winning side? Yeah, it has to be done though, didn't it? <laughs> Filthy Celts. <laughs> But but yeah, I'll definitely be checking out there some some more reviews and seeing whether it's worth my forty five pounds or not, or maybe I'll pick it up in the Steam sale. Who knows? So that's it from us for your Friday news roundup. We'll see you again on Sunday when the podcast goes live, or if you're a patron, you can go see it right now. Ah, oh, it's so exciting! It's, it's not really that exciting. I mean, Oh, it's fucking well exciting. I mean, yeah, that. <laughs> Don't undersell it. Don't undersell it. As always, if you like what we're making and you want to help us make it, go on over to Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. You can get access to the podcast and the Discord channel and a bunch of other great stuff. I've been Henry. He's Megaz. We'll see you next time. Bye for now. Bread and butter. Bread and butter. Bread and butter is good. Fish and chips. Bye, Steak and kidney. Oh. Tell Abs leave in the comments. You know your mic's over there. I have to die there. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. What the fuck? <laughs> That's the outtake. <laughs> <laughs>